Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum width of a binary tree. We're given the root of a binary tree and we want to return its maximum width. Well, what is its maximum width? Well, it's a bit different than what you might expect. Taking a look at this binary tree, this level has a width of one because there's just a single node in that level. The second level has a width of two. There's two nodes in this level. The third level here does not have a width of three like you might expect. It has a width of four. Basically, it's measured as taking the leftmost non-null node in the level and the rightmost non-null node in the level and getting the distance between them. And in this case, the distance is measured by each spot where a node could go. Like here, there is a node, but we know that there could also be a node over here. So that makes this distance of length four. So even though there's three nodes, we say that the width of this level is four. So that makes it a bit trickier than you would think by just using like a simple algorithm like breadth first search because with tree problems those are usually our two choices. We can either do DFS depth first search or BFS breadth first search. In this case since we are trying to get the width of a level BFS does seem more intuitive but it's also not quite as straightforward as you might think because with breadth first search the answer that this would give us for the third level here is three. But we would actually want a four. Now, otherwise, breadth for search is pretty good because what it will do is it will go level by level, allowing us to get the width of each level because we don't necessarily know that the last level will have the widest width. So we have to do so for each level. But the question is, how do we count these empty positions? Let's take the same tree structure as this example. You might first try taking this node and adding it to a level, okay? Then add its children to the next level and then take these two nodes and start adding their children to the next level. Let's say that this fourth level is the one we're paying attention to right now. Here, since we want to be able to count one, two, three, four, let's try adding null to the queue. So even though this guy's left child does not exist, we can try adding that to the queue as well, as well as adding this real one. Then when we start popping from the queue, we'll count one, two, three, four, and it'll give us the accurate count. Now, the problem here is if this guy doesn't have a child, then this guy will also not have children either. But for the subsequent levels, we do want to get the accurate count. So this is a method like we technically could do for null. We could also add null to the queue or its children, but this is gonna get complicated and a pain to code up, but we can use a similar technique here to count these null nodes. And the idea is reminiscent of how heaps work. With a heap data structure, each node is actually numbered starting at one. And the number assigned to its left child is always two times what its value is. So the left child is going to be two and the right child is going to be two times that plus one. So it's going to be three here. And this guy's left child is going to be two times two, which is four. And I'll just quickly fill in the rest of this structure. The right child here is going to be two times two plus one. That's five. Left child here is going to be six. Right child is going to be plus one seven and we could continue building out the tree structure just like this but how does this help us well ideally we would be able to assign each node in the tree a value corresponding to its position then even if a node like this one doesn't exist here we will still count the width of this level as being seven, the value assigned to the rightmost node, and four, the value assigned to the leftmost node, we'll take seven minus four, that's three. We'll always do a plus one because that's just how calculating the length works. So now our result will end up being four for this last level. So that's the idea. Now, how exactly are we gonna implement it using breadth first search? Well, it's pretty simple. We're gonna have our queue data structure. We're gonna add the root to the queue, which is one. We're also gonna assign this node a number and the root is always gonna be starting at value one. So this is gonna get confusing because we have multiple numbers, but I'll just show you. The first one is gonna be the node. The second one is gonna be the number assigned to that node. And the third one is gonna be the level for that node. In this case, for level, I'll just say it's starting at zero, though we could say this is the first level. The level doesn't really matter, but it's gonna be used for us to distinguish when we're at this level and then we move 
to another level. So let's say the level is zero. Then when we pop from our queue, we get its two children and add those to the queue. So we would add three to the queue and we would add two to the queue. I'm just putting the values themselves. Just assume we're also adding the number and the level. But for this node, its number would be two and this guy's number would be three, even though that's like the opposite of like their actual values. But you can see getting the number of a node is as easy as just incrementing. If this guy starts at one, this is gonna be two, this is gonna be three, four, five, six. Pretty simple to get the number and the level is also gonna be pretty easy because when we take the children of this guy and append them to the queue, we're also gonna say, well, if this is level is one, this is level is gonna be plus one, so it's gonna be two, or wherever we start at. If this was zero, this would be one. And lastly, to actually get the width of a level, anytime we get to a node that is the first node in that level, we will know because we have just popped it from the queue and its level is different than the previous one. So we'll be able to automatically detect that and we will always know the first node in a level. So then when we get to every other node, we will easily be able to calculate the width because we only need the first node in the level and whatever the last node in the level is to calculate the width. Since this is just a BFS algorithm, we are going to code this up in big O of n time where n is the size of the tree, same with memory complexity. So now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize our result and I'm gonna set it to zero and then we are gonna get started with our queue. In Python, it's called a deck. So we can initialize it like this. And what I'm gonna do is pass in our first tuple, which is gonna contain the root node as well as one is gonna be the number assigned to it and zero is gonna be its level. So I'll add a comment just to make it more clear. Now, while the queue is non-empty, we are gonna to want to pop from the queue. So we're gonna say queue pop left, we get three values, the node, the number of the node and the level of the node. Now, how do we update the result if we wanted to? Well, we would want to set the result equal to the max because we are trying to find the maximum width. We would take the max of itself and we would calculate the new width. How do we do that though? Remember, I was talking about taking the number of the current node and subtracting it from the first node in the same level. So we have to keep track of the level. How do we even update the level? Well, if we ever got to the point where the current level was greater than the previous level, then we would set the previous level equal to the current level. The current level wouldn't really change because it's going to be updated on each iteration of the loop. Well, first of all, we're gonna need a new variable for this. So I'm gonna do that over here. We're gonna keep track of what the previous level is and we're gonna keep track of what the previous number is. This actually should be called the number of the first node in the current level because that's what it's gonna be used as. I'm gonna initialize both of these. Uh, well, the level we'll say is gonna be zero to start out with and the previous number I guess is also gonna be zero. It should be one less than whatever our first node's number is for the math to work out. But here where we are updating our previous level, let's also set our previous number equal to the current number. So this means anytime we update our level, the number, the previous number will always be set to the first nodes number in that level. That's exactly what we want because now when we calculate the width of the current level, we can say the current number minus the previous number plus one, this is our offset that we're always gonna include. And there we have it, we have updated our result. The only thing you don't wanna forget is for the node, we also have to add its children to the queue, but we're only gonna add the children if they are non-null. So I'm gonna check is the left node non-null if it is, then we are going to append it to the queue as like a sub list or a little list with three values, the child itself, node dot left, as well as the number of the node, the left child is always gonna be two times the current number, 
and the level, which is always going to be plus one of the current level, since this is a child of the current node, its level, of course, has to be plus one. And we're going to do the same thing pretty much for the right child as well. The one thing I will mention, though, is make sure you append the left node before you append the right node. Because remember, with cues, it's first in, first out. We are trying to go left to right here. So this will be right. This will be right. And the number is always going to be two times num plus one. And the level is also going to be level plus one. So that is pretty much the entire code. Let's make sure we return our result and let's run this to make sure that it works. OK, it looks like we just missed an edge case, which I think is good because this is an opportunity to actually go through the code really quickly and show you where I had a small bug. So here we can see that the code worked for 74 cases, but on the 75th one we failed. And it's definitely an edge case because we're given a tree of size one where this is the root node, just a single one. And we were expecting an output of one, which makes sense. The width of a single node tree should be one, but I returned true. Why is that the case? Well, it's because we gave the root node a number of one, but we gave the previous number a value of zero. This loop will only execute once where the current node's number will be one, the previous node's number will be zero, and the width we're gonna end up calculating is two. So the way to fix that is going to be to give the previous number an initial value of one, so that if we ever calculate the width of the first level, we will get a width of one. So let's rerun that to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.